this, that's what he looks like. He's got a lot of energy kind of pent up and ready to go. So let's get going here. Both of these players are 11 and three. And given the structure of the tournament, a 12th win is a guarantee into the top eight. So who's it going to be? Strosky or Nassif making it in the top eight. And then the loser is going to drop down to four losses and is going to be in a tiebreaker scrum with four where four of them will make it in and the rest won't. So that's what we're looking at here. Let's get underway, Paul. What do you make of the opening hands here for our players? Well, Strasky has a very solid start here. As you can see, there's the Merfolk Wind Robbers, a pair of Merfolk Wind Robbers, a pair of Drown of the Locks, Interaction and Blood Chief's Thirst, and also Soaring Thought Thief. I think the thing that he's really considering now is, uh, the, the, the I believe the card that's way on the left here for Strasky is likely a land that comes into play tapped. If it was an untapped land, I don't think he'd be thinking this long about this turn. So I think he's just deciding uh, this, deciding between the merits of either running out the Clearwater Pathway to play a turn one Wind Robber or playing the tap land this turn and giving himself, uh, looking at future draws and setting himself for a potential turn two Soaring Thought Thief instead. See the turn one play here for Nassif. Just a little one one human. 1-1 yeah, one, one for a 1-1 one, one Merfolk Wim Robber here for Andre Strosky. Oh, man, the Gilded Goose. The brick uh, wall? Perfectly <laughs> lighting up here with this uh, Merfolk Wim Robber. So, it's a brick wall. <laughs> yeah, so the Seeps can just go Goose, play the Mammoth, and now he has a blocker for the uh, the Merfolk Wim Robber here. Funny. You see Blood Chief's Thirst in hand here for Strosky. If the goose is is deemed Blood Chief's thirstable and he can find that untapped <laughs> black mana, we may see the goose get cooked. But yeah, and, and, and I do think there are merits to just trying to get that goose off the table because fundamentally the strategy of the rogue deck is to try to mill your opponent so that you can turn on Drown in the Locks and all your payoff cards. But one of the cards that you can mill is Feasting Troll King. If you let a Gilded Goose survive and it just starts generating food tokens for free, all of a sudden you can start returning Feasting Troll Kings for free out of the graveyard. Right. And that is certainly something that they're going to keep an eye on here. Now, interestingly, you see the pathway drawn off the top here for Strosky does give him that option. With two copies of Drown in the Lock in hand, one way or the other, he needs to start getting cards into the graveyard here for Nassif. Yeah, and that Clearwater Pathway was a fantastic draw here Big for Big rip. So now mm -hmm. he has many options. I think um, you can justify here playing the Clearwater Pathway for Black, Blood Chief's Thirsting the Gilded Goose, preventing a potential Wicked Wolf on turn three from the Seif. Follow that up with a second Merfolk Wind Robber, and you're really well set up here now. This one gets to chip in and get the mill train going. There's a second card going to the graveyard here for the Seif. As he draws his card for the turn, it's a forest. He'll definitely take it. But you can see that killing that uh, that goose has changed things. Uh, you know, he was hoping to get this Wicked Wolf on the battlefield. Now it looks like it's going to have to be Lovestruck Beast. Yeah, I mean, that's really the only play here. And I think the Seif is just deciding whether or not he wants to attack with this 1-1. One, one. And, and that's what he's really spending all this time on and, and weighing whether or not he thinks Strasky would choose to go with the block here. Because... If Strasky does block, it is kind of a disaster for Nassif, as then he won't really be able to attack with the Lovestruck Beast. So there it is, Lovestruck Beast on the battlefield. Pass the turn back for Gabriel. And Strasky finds a swamp, so things coming up well for him here as far as hitting the mana that he'd like and getting these Drown and the Locks all charged up. I mean, that clear, again, I, I, I want to stress that clear water pathway off the top huge. was huge for Andre Strasky. It really was. He didn't have the ability to cast the Blood Chief's Thirst before finding that. And for Strasky here, I mean, it, it seems like, um, I mean, his only real play here is just to attack here, mill two cards. And at this point, there should be enough cards in the Seed's graveyard where he can really counter anything that the Seed plays next turn. He can just play a Swamp and pass and keep up the Drown of the Lock or the Soaring Thought Thief. Looks like he's going to go for Drown of the Lock right now on the Beast. And we know why, Paul. He's yeah. thinking about the Great Henge here. Yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. However, this does leave him vulnerable to a Wicked Wolf 
from the sieve. And that does look like uh, it is what we're going to see here. Hard to call it a disaster, but uh, Wicked Wolf is a, that's a very real card here. Yeah. And maybe, you know, Strasky's thinking it's it's not too bad given that he does have a Lurus, right? And given that he has a Lurus, he can eventually just get back that Wind Robber. I think it's much worse for him if a Great Hedge resolves next turn because he just simply did not have an answer for it. All right, we could see a double spell turn here from Strosky. He's got the Soaring Thought Thief at the ready. He's going to main phase this so that he gets the additional mill trigger off of the Wind Robber. And this should put enough cards in the graveyard here. Ooh, there's Feasting Troll King going into the yard. Nope, looks like he's still a card short. Maybe this is the one that does it. There we go. That's the eighth card, which is going to pump up the, the Thief, also turn on the Wind Robber. That was a draw. That was wow. great. The Seif went from having no play this turn to now having that a uh, Feasting Troll King as an option. Now, of course, Strasky has a counter here, but that means that the follow-up Feasting Troll King should resolve unless Strasky draws another way to counter the Troll King. So that Castle Garenbrig off the top, giving the Seif access to that six mana was big. Hey, you know, Andre found the land that he needed back on turn two. Nassif will take this one here, no doubt about it. But as predicted, the Feasting Troll King gets countered. There's now two of them staying in the graveyard as he passes the turn back. Damage is starting to add up for Strasky. This is going to knock Nassif down to 12, but we have seen that the green food deck can certainly turn the tide of that quite quickly if a uh, Feasting Troll King can stick on the battlefield. And it should, right? I mean, the Seif's just going to go for it here, most likely. And um, it's going to be really hard to outrace. That's a nice one, too. Look at that. Witch's Oven off the top means that even if one of these Feasting Troll Kings were to get messed with, it could simply get thrown into the Witch's Oven. That would give the requisite three food to get one of them back. Yeah. And Nassif is in, is in really good shape here. He's going to be able to get in an attack here. Life totals will, will even up, and then we're going to have a Feasting Troll King in play. And actually, we're going to see two Feasting Troll Kings in play because, of course, when Feasting Troll King enters a battlefield, gives you those three tokens, sack the three food, get another Feasting Troll King in play. And guess what? Even if Strasky has a removal spell, you sack one of the Feasting Troll Kings for, for, for two food, all of a sudden you can get it back next turn. Right. This is just a ton of pressure on Strasky. It's hard to imagine him getting out from this particular turn. I mean, this turn went from, okay, I'll take four to now there's 14 more power of trample on the battlefield than there was before Andre passed. Yeah, I mean, this this mono green deck just has the ability to put on so much power on that battlefield. I mean, Castle Garenbrig is just so, so insane in this deck. I mean, just that one-two punch of Troll King plus Castle Garenbrig. And this deck really maximizes on that land. Not only does it play Feasting Tro Troll King, but I believe Nassif's List also plays a copy of Kogla as well. Let's we'll see if Strosky can find any way out here. He's found a Ruin Crab. That certainly isn't going to help out here. Nassif drops down to 10. The Wind Robber mills... One more card, and this is desperation time now from Strosky. He's going to sacrifice the Wind Robber, and it's another copy of Ruin Crab. Yeah, I was really looking for a, a low mage's domination there to be able to steal one of these. Well, I guess it wouldn't even effectively steal the Feasting Troll King, given that Nassif drew that Witch's Oven as well. That's right, and that's going to be game number one, going to Gabriel Nassif. And as we mentioned before, this match is going to put somebody into the top eight here. Potentially even somebody with a loss uh, could make it in as well, but they're really fighting for that guaranteed slot in the top eight. 12 wins and you're in. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have game number two of Gabriel Nassif versus Andre Strosky. When a card has a converted mana cost and you always cast it for less than that, we have a candidate for an icon of standard. And today we're looking at Mystical Dispute. Mani, why is this card so amazing? Sean, Manalik has never looked 
so good. Coming in the cycle of self-color hate cards that came from Throne of Eldraine, Missile Dispute is a three mana counter spell that against other blue spells costs one. It's so efficient, it's so powerful as a sideboard card in the blue control and tempo strategies. But as we've seen in its time in standard, when there's too much dominance of blue, Mystical Dispute begins to find its way into the main deck, just allowing you to cast a threat and then force it through by having a one mana counter spell to back it up has just time and yeah. time again proven to be so good in standard. Now, Maria, I mean, this could go well in a tempo deck, an aggro deck, a control deck, but what is the kind of deck you least want to be playing if your opponent's running Mystical Disputes? A blue deck. A blue deck, Sean. Any deck uh, with the color blue. Just, thank you. You know, imagine being terrified constantly. That's what this card means. Uh, <laughs> if you're playing a blue deck, particularly a blue control deck, you've always got to think, do they have it? And do you want that to be your life? Do you really want to be that to be your life? Or do you just want to play some creatures? That's a question I have for you. Oh, Maria, no, I prefer to be ever suspicious of a single untapped island every single turn for the rest of my life. And that <laughs> is one of the reasons why Mystical Dispute is an icon of standard. <laughs> And welcome back to coverage here of the Zendikar Rising Championship. Marshall Sutcliffe with Apol Chion. Thank you for joining us as we're well down the stretch here on day number two. These are some of our last matches that we get to see between Andrei Strosky and Gabriel Massif for this one. Uh, these players that are 11 and 3 and with a game win in, in the first game there off of two Feasting Troll Kings entering the battlefield on the same turn there for Gabriel Massif. He's moved within one game of top eight again. Gabriel Nassif has been in an absolute tear for the past, call it, year and a half. And uh, is looking to capitalize once again by making another top eight here at the Zendikar Rising Championship. He's playing mono green food here in standard. Now, it's worth noting that tomorrow the top eight will be played in historic, exclusively in historic. So. These are not the decks, actually, that they're going to be playing with, you know, whoever ends up making it in. Kind of interesting to note. And let's get underway here. Uh, Andre, of course, on the play after having lost the first game, has Thieves, Guild, Enforcer all lined up with Blood Chief's Thirst for the first play from the Seif, most likely. Yeah, really good. Good little one. hand there from Strosky, huh? Yeah, really great one two setup here, being able to go turn one Thieves, Guild, Enforcer into turn two Soaring Thought Thief. That yeah. combination puts immediately puts six cards into your opponent's graveyard. Okay, so one drops for both, and it also forced Strosky to kind of decide, do I want to kill the goose or do I want to get this Soaring Thought Thief down? Wow, that's interesting because because now because now as since he drew the Ruin Crab, he could he doesn't feel as bad about this. He can go Ruin Crab, Blood Chief Thirst. Next turn, cast of one mind, because now, because of the Ruin Crab, he has both a human and a non-human on the battlefield. That's right. Try to hit that land drop to get the Soaring Thought Thief down and keep things rolling. He passes the turn back to Nassif, who just has food and now two forests. <clears throat> and he's going to go for Heart's Desire. So untapped pretty blue. anemic start here. And there it, there is. it is. An untapped blue source for Strosky off of of one mind. That's going to get a mill of three. There's the th Soaring Thought Thief. That's going to be a Thieves Guild Enforcer. And that's also going to pump it up. Oh, easy there, crab. And <laughs> in comes <laughs> the Thieves Guild Enforcer. So a great start here from Strosky, really doing everything you could hope for for the Demir Rogues deck. Yeah, really, really nice, aggressive start here. However, this Lovestruck Beast should at least be able to keep that Thieves Guild Enforcer at bay. But... Because Nassif also has the great henge in hand, he might actually just choose not to block here. Yeah, I'm curious. I, I assume that Andre would be fine making the trade. Right. And this land off the top here for Strasky was also really, really nice because he really needed it. We saw actually Paulo in the previous match against Nassif miss land drop number four to be able to cast that into the story. And Strasky has been a frequent... Um, 
has been frequently on the same uh, testing team as Paula. I believe they were on the same team for this event as well. So mm -hmm. uh, Nasif is actually playing against the exact same deck in back-to-back -back rounds here. Wow, two really tough players as well. It's never easy when you're at the top tables. Nasif is deciding, do I need to throw something in the way of this enforcer? No, I'm just going to take it down to nine. He goes, but again, that fourth land unlocks the possibility for into the story to keep things rolling forward here for Andre Strosky. Because I'll do Mammoth off the top, but is it time for the Great Henge? I think, yeah, this is, look, Nasif is behind. It's always these situations. If you're behind, you just got to go for it. You can't really afford to play around things. Cast a Great Henge and hope that's the card that kind of allows you to come back. And now Nasif is more than happy to wow. trade that Left Struck Beast with the Thieves Guild Enforcer because he was able to play that Great Hedge. What an incredible draw here from Strosky, though. Really just beautiful sequencing to line things up as he resolves into the story on end step, finds another Ruin Crab as well as Blood Chiefs Thirst. And if he ever runs out of gas, he's got another end of the story in hand, too. Yeah, but now we're in a situation where extra milling is not as important unless he really wants to kind of uh, end the game that way. So curious to see what Strasky chooses to do here as, as he might want to just kind of fire off that into the story to kind of just try to take control of this game because Nassif still has a handful of threats in his hand. There's a Feasting Troll King into the graveyard here for Nasif off of this attack from the Thieves, uh, excuse me, from the Soaring Thought Thief. But Ruin Crab number two, now we've all seen how this goes. This is Turbo Mill. You, your library just starts flowing into the graveyard here with the two crabs plus the random triggers from all of your, uh, your, your rogues. And it looks like Strosky's content to just pass the turn back with another Soaring Thought Thief, but perhaps more importantly, another end of the story in hand here, Paul. Yeah, and Nasif right now has access to seven mana, it looks like. Now, if he wants to only cast creatures, I guess he has access to eight mana. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine that he wants to run out this Wicked Wolf and get that Soaring Thought Thief potentially off the battlefield or maybe even one of these Rune Crabs. There's Chainweb Arachnir. Which isn't terrible. That's a 2-3 reach flyer with That's that right. green henge. Thanks to the henge, yeah. Unfortunately, still allows unchecked attacks with the Soaring Thought Thief. And even worse, though, uh, for Nasif, we happen to know that there's another Thought Thief in hand for Strosky. So assuming Strosky goes like into the story here, then untaps there, you know, he could easily play that after blocks and in which case it would just eat up the, the Thought Thief, or excuse me, the uh, Arachnir. Yeah, but I mean, this is a huge turn here from the Thief. He really was able big to turn. put three creatures on the battlefield, draw three cards, one of which was a Reach creature that can potentially chump block the Soaring Thought Thief. And the Thief doesn't really care if this Chain Web Arachnir ent goes into their graveyard, as he can just escape it. And if he does, then all of a sudden that Arachnir is eating one of these Soaring Thought Thieves. Yeah, don't call it a comeback. Gabriel Nassif says, I'm still here, Andre. I won game number one in a similar fashion where I had a slower start, but man, I've been able to turn the corner. That said, Strosky's drawn 10 cards over the last two turn cycles. Like, you got to feel like he can find ways to win the game off of that. Yeah, I mean, he needs to find answers. He needs to be able to at least stem some of this bleeding because all of a sudden, <clears throat> Nassif has put... 12 power onto the battlefield here. He also has the ability to gain a bunch of life. He's got the Great Henge and a food token in play. So it's going to be pretty hard now for Strasky to whittle down Nasif's life total. So I think at this point, he's probably going to want to try and shift gears here and try to go for the mill strategy and survive while doing so. He gets a discounted of one mind, and he's probably looking for another Ruin Crab. And there is one. He's actually found it. So Ruin Crab number two gets back on the battlefield. He lost one of the Wicked Wolf last turn, but now he's back on the Turbo Mill plan. Here's six more cards. And then he'll probably line up attack with the Thought Thief as well. And there's another Feasting Troll King. Only one food on the battlefield currently, though. Yeah, and I, and I think Strasky's also considering 
just running out the Soaring Thought Thief, because if he does, that's two more cards that he can mill. But given all the cards that Nassif has in hand, you're just extremely likely to have to need to be able to fire off both of those counter spells in hand. Mm -hmm. So I think Strasky is probably going to just keep up both Essence Scatter and Drown of the Lock, but it really just comes down to how many cards Nassif has left in his library. And I know and how many. I looked, Paul. I caught it. He's got 17. You caught it. I actually 17. caught it this time. Yeah, 17. Okay, so we are right close. Now. Very close. You figure six from the crabs straight away. Another two here. That's down to 15. A draw step is 14. And a fable passage would just get the job done. That's right. And now we're going to see the block here. And it looks like Strosky, as you mentioned, wants to prioritize leaving up the reactive spells, drown in the lock, as well as an essence scatter, rather than even bothering to take down this... Uh, this arachnir on top of it, as you mentioned before, too, it's almost worse in the graveyard anyway. Strasky's on the mill plan. Is there any way for Nassif to get rid of these ruined crabs and try to shut off the biggest source of it from here? I'm not seeing it, Paul. There's just not a whole lot of way. I mean, frankly, that's green's really good at putting big creatures into play not really good at killing things the only ways the Steve can actually kill crabs are the four wicked wolves that he has in his deck as he did board out the two copies of kogla that he had in his main and we're going to see drown in the lock after the crabs get in the way of the two smaller creatures reducing an attack that was for what 6 10 13 down to just four here and it's clear what andre strosky's game plan is at this point with regards to the mill strategy. He's been on this for a while. The key, Paul, was that he didn't find another Ruin Crab off of the end of the story plus draw step, but the the extra draw spell that he had there did find that second crab back on the battlefield, and that's what's enabling this whole strategy. Yeah. Also keep in mind that Shrosky does have access to Alluris, meaning that um, you know if he's really close, he could use the Alluris to get back a third Ruin Crab and mill and play the C for nine, potentially. Right. Here's Essence Scatter. Basically going to counter anything at this point. It was scavenging news. And I just, I, just, I just simply don't think Nassif has enough here to be able to kill Strosky in time before he gets decked. It feels like Nassif needs to win next turn, right? Like, he, he is likely to be very low on cards on his turn, but if he could find the victory there, perhaps, but it's mono green. I mean, th this isn't gruel, right? Like he, right. he can't just cleave you out. He can't just oh. drop a couple of haste creatures, drown in the lock, a little insurance policy here for Strosky. Yeah, so now he's got an additional counter spell slash removal spell to go with the Blood Chiefsters and that other Soaring Thought Thief, so... Things looking very, very good here for Strasky. And Strasky is content to just throw any removal at anything that can stick. Remember, he's the one who's drawn 10 extra cards this game, two into the stories. And you can see the cards going into the graveyard here now as Strasky moves closer and closer. Here's Soaring Thought Thief. This results in double triggers, eight cards left in the library here for Nassif. So, so Nassif trigger, has trigger. to find a way to win next turn, and I just yeah. don't think he has it. Yeah, all four of his Feasting Troll Kings are in the graveyard now, but just the one food available, a redundant copy of Castle Garenbrig, means I don't think he can do it here, Paul. I don't see any way out for Nassif. He's got to get Strosky from 16 to 0 or kill all of his board. <laughs> right. And those are, and he has to do all of both of <laughs> either of those, and it's not going to happen to Gabriel Nassif is going to concede the game. So we've got Andre Strosky versus Gabriel Nassif tied up at a game of peace. This is for top eight. Both of our players are from Europe, by the way, where it's getting quite late in the evening. So you'll see, I, I, mean, I gotta say, Nassif looks pretty comfortable here. He doesn't look super tired, but if I were to guess, I would say that Strosky's had a very long day he, at the table here. He looks like he's barely hanging on. It is, mm -hmm. it is, Near it's 3 30 in the morning right now for him. So in, in Prague, uh, okay. He, so he must be feeling it here. Uh doesn't look like it's been affecting his play so far. Um, you know, he's 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 had an incredible run. And um, you know, 
just has this one game left before he uh, he will get a, a well-deserved rest here. Uh, one interesting thing that I want to talk about was just watching the Seep sideboard. And typically, in in a matchup against a perceived control deck, right? This Demir Rogue deck plays a bunch of counter spells and a bunch of card draw. You would think, well, Trail of Crumbs, that's a really good card against a typical control deck. However, what Nasif seems to have identified that the way that this matchup plays out is not this grindy attrition game, but instead, if you do play cards, you need to play cards to the board because if you don't, and if you just kind of, you know, spend three mana every turn sacrificing a food to get a permanent, it's going to be fairly easy for Strasky to just mill you out if you're trying to do it that way. So he boarded out some number of Trail of Crumbs in this matchup. Interesting. Funny how big of an impact Ruin Crab has, right? It's just the card they don't want to see on turn one as it can completely change the way that the game plays out and forces the mono green deck to try to race. Oh Ooh. no, a mulligan to five here for wow. Strasky. And that's a pretty good five. He's got crab plus two reactive spells, but yikes. Yeah, but that is a lot of love struck beasts on the Seif side. So if you can just find land number three here. Yeah, he's going to have five to 18 power on the board after a few turns. There's a tangled right. Florahedron, which, yeah, that counts as a land. So we're just going to see Heart's Desire into Heart's Desire, Heart's Desire. No, he's got to play the Florahedron this turn, but still. Two of them on the battlefield, and then it's just going to be a parade of Lovestruck Beasts coming up. And I'm sorry, but the Ruin Crab may not be able to keep up. Yeah, this is just a, a, a just straight up mono green stompy draw here. It really is. And the Seif, just, just an army of five fives deal. Let's see how this goes. We're going to see this Rune Crab again. It's got a long way to go, but it's not going to be able to do it on its own. Now, Strasky's drawn of one mind and could potentially start to get things rolling here. Okay, there's a land off the top. He can play that. Remember, he's got a copy of Drown in the Lock, which is now turned on. So that's something that he can do. You know, this type of draw might be vulnerable to letting to having those one ones die, stranding all of the five five love struck beasts. It's not impossible. Yeah, I I mean I, I think I think the Seif's just gonna he just, Yeah, he's playing this out first, which is a really heads up play. The reason why he's playing that first is if Andre Strasky has a counterspell, now he's clear to attack with those 1-1 one, one tokens. Had he just attacked with the 1-1 one, one tokens and the Love Struck Beast, Strasky might have just run out of Soaring Thought Thief to eat one of the 1-1s. One, now that you've dealt with one of the 1-1s, one, then Strasky could have followed that up with a removal spell on another 1-1. One, one. All of a sudden, you've invalidated the Love Struck Beasts. Yeah, really tough. Merfolk Wind Robber hits the battlefield here for Strasky, a low-impact play to say the least. He passes the turn back to Nassif with Soaring Thought Thief and Drown in the Lock at the ready, maybe forced to fire off a Drown right here. I think the 1-1 one -one isn't that important. I think he'd rather just counter the 5-5 five -five and make Nassif tap out. Uh, or in this Nassif case, kill, kill, or kill, kill the, the one five -five. that's on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a better short-term play here for Strasky as it keeps his life total higher, which just back, I mean, look, there's only been one spell cast from the Seif. It's happened three times, but it's just the one Lovestruck Beast for days here. And uh, Strasky is already down to 12 as a result. So Strasky is going to do the block and sack. He's going to jump in front with the Wind Robber, then oh. sacrifice it before damage. Ooh, Lone Mage's domination. So this crab has done good work. It's turned on Drown on the Lock. It's also turned on a Lil Mage's Domination. And Strasky now needs to think about what he wants to do here. He's not taking any damage this turn. Does he need to use Drown in the Lock to manage the board, or can he fire off the Soaring Thought Thief? Remember, he doesn't have Wiggle Room here. Normally, it'd be like, right. fine, I'll throw out the, the Thought Thief, and off we go. But he's only got three lands. He's mulligan to five here. So the upside of Soaring Thought Thief is next turn, you can play Of One Mind and try to draw an untapped blue source, and then also play Lil Mage's Domination. Now, I'm not sure if he's going to go for that line, right? I mean, he also gets a draw <laughs> step in there. He does, like, so he can right? see... He, Right, he can see. The thing is, um, you could also be tempted to kill one of these five fives and steal the other one, which then would shut Nasif off of a potential great hand off the top. 
that could also be something that he's thinking of, just managing those five fives. Boy, Strasky forced wow. to make decisions, decides to do nothing. He leaves that mana fallow. Wow. No mana used there off of those two. Can he afford that at this point? So did he just cast nothing? He just did nothing. I'm surprised he didn't just play Soaring Thought Thief if you were not going to kill something. Well, this turn, he decided to go ahead and steal the Lovestruck Beast. Yeah, and, and now Nasif can use Wicked Wolf here to kill the crab. Uh, alternatively, he can just escape the chain web Arachnir and make it so that he doesn't have enough cards in the, gra uh, in the graveyard. But it looks like he just wants to prevent getting crabbed out here. And as he's going to send in the team here, he can afford to throw away a 1 1 into the opposing Lovestruck Beast because it gets him in for seven. And. Strasky could go for the um, could go for the kill your one ones to strand your five five line, potentially. Or he could just kill the five five, which would put him in a perfectly fine spot. Although this wicked wolf is also an extremely annoying threat here. It really is. Heartless act, soaring thought thief, of one mind, drown in the lock, into the story, no land here for Strasky. Yeah, and this of one mind, I mean, we see, we've seen the upside of it where you do piece together a situation where you can cast it for one, but when you're looking at it as a divination, a little below the bar. Super close game. Strosky has had effectively no wiggle room here. As he mulligan to five, Nasif's had a pretty good draw. It was just a heavy Lovestruck Beast draw. He's been able to use up most of his mana most turns and has put out an impressive board. But really, my focus here is on Strosky because it seems like Nasif's job's been fairly straightforward, where Strosky is the one who's had to make the big judgment calls as he's gone through. Yeah, and Chainweb Erector, not a huge... I mean, it, it, it is a big threat, but... Um... Something that Strasky could handle because he had that he has that left struck beast in play. But I'm still so struggling to pressure. see how Strasky is gonna handle this wicked wolf because with that chain web arachnir in play, I mean that wicked wolf is gonna have multiple indestructibility shields, basically. Right? So just spot removal is just not gonna quite get it done here. That's right. And we're going to see Heartless Axe target the Lovestruck Beast. It'll most likely just get thrown in the oven here. And that's how you can pump up the Wicked Wolf. Oh, and this is, this is super interesting, too. I don't know if Nasif is going to sack both of the foods because he might want to just keep the wolf in play. Because you could sack both food. Okay, oh, he is going for the both food. Because if you didn't, you would have an extra shield for it. But now... Strasky does have the option to kill the wolf. However, Ooh, he found Thieves Guild Enforcer. Yeah, and you have to kill the wolf here. Right, so he can get the wolf off the battlefield and have a blocker and survive at one? Is that right. where we're at here, Paul? Like that had oh, to be. Oh man, that was a that draws. was a really great draw. Because now that's two additional threats that Strasky has to deal with. There aren't sweepers or anything like that in this deck. Right, he has to actually deal on a one-for-one -one basis, and the fact that he's fallen so far behind on land drops, mainly due to that mulligan, means that with another 1-1 one, one and another 5-5 five, five on the battlefield here, this there's just That's nothing that Strosky can do, and he's going to scoop him up. Gabriel Nassif wow. is into the top eight. Another top eight for Nassif. It's the hat. It's got to be the hat. It's the hat, right? And he's just a streamer. <laughs> right. <laughs>